So, Canon is 50 mil, but can you do astrophotography with it? Firstly, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done already, please subscribe to the channel. There's a link there. I, I put a link on the video. Posh, posh. So there are a couple of videos um, planned. Uh, I'm gonna do a little review on the Samyang 14mm, uh, the 2.8. I've had that lens now for a little while. So just putting the finishing touches to that really, and I'm hopefully that's gonna be up in the next couple of weeks. So please subscribe to make sure you don't miss that one. That's gonna be a good one. So this is gonna be a very quick review of the very affordable 50mm by Canon. Uh, it's the Mark II version uh, at 1.8. I've had this little lens now for, for quite a long while, to be honest. I used it on my 7D prior, which kind of, if you do the maths, gives you about an 80, 80 mil, 75, 80 mil, somewhere around about there. If you know the exact, pop it in the comment below. Um, and it's a cracking little lens. Now I'm not gonna talk about it for daytime photography because although I do take photos, it, you know, it's been a cracking little lens. It's, it's, a, it's a really good lens. And the biggest thing about this lens is the fact that it is so cheap. Coming in at just under a hundred pounds, you, you just can't fault it. You get a lot of lens for, for, your, for your bucks. So this is just gonna be its usage for Astro. Okay, um, obviously, you know, kind of here in the UK and especially in Wales now because we are still under lockdown. Um, you know, we're doing it, there's quite a lot of us doing astrophotography at the back now. If you go to some of the places where you can pick up this lens second hand, you will get a lot of lens for under 50 quid. Under 50 quid, you know, you can use this by day, knock that background out lovely, stand the subject out, it'll look amazing. At night, it will give you a little taste into astrophotography. Yes, it will get you by in astrophotography. This may not satisfy the professional photographer at night that wants to take spot on images, but this is a lens that's under a hundred pound. And if you're an amateur photographer, you just want to get out and just sample a little bit of astrophotography. This is the ticket under 50 quid used. So like I said before, the maximum aperture of this lens is 1.8. Now, that sucks in a lot of light. The maximum viewing angle is about 46 degrees. Now, at 46 degrees, you may want to consider maybe some panorama shots. Now, if you put like three or four of these together, you know, just try it, try as you go, learn some blending techniques, you will get good results. You will get results. And this lens isn't without its faults. It can, it can have coma. It can have chromatic aberrations. So, you know, I'll, I'll put up onto the, onto the screen now, you know, the coma, little streaks of blue and, and red. Um, for the chromatic aberration, I always think they look like little painted seagulls or little painted birds. Uh, you will see like almost like a V-like kind of structure. But I think it, it really depends exactly what you're after. Now, if this is your first time in astrophotography, you, you won't even see that. You, you, you will look at it initially and you will go, wow, wow, that's, that's, a, that's a good image. That's a really, really good image. There's something I wanna go over and it's called the 500 rule. Now, really I should have, done this on a previous video um, on the star trails up in uh, the Brecon Beacons. The rule of 500. Now, the 500 rule states that you take the focal length of the lens, which in our case is the 50mm, so you take that 50 and you divide it by the 500. Now, this will give you a number in seconds to achieve nice stars in one shot. So for instance, if we take a photo now of 11 seconds, we're gonna get some star trails within that motion. We're not gonna kind of catch it really sharp. And that's very important, really. We wanna catch that image without too many star trails, not unless you're actually looking for that effect. So the first image I'll show you is one of the mountainside with a um, TV mast on it. I'll put all the seconds on the picture at the end 
It was a very small shutter speed on this one. And, I, and I've got a funny feeling, top of my head, I want to say it, it, it was about four seconds. The ISO wasn't greatly pushed either. Uh, I think uh, I think that was that was about a thousand I think at the time. But what I did notice that some of the light on the horizon was bleeding up, so that was affecting the image. Now this is just you know kind of backyard experimenting really with the 50 mil, but it's still done really well. Still done really well. You have still got that problem with coma and chromatic aberration. Do you notice I've got to say that really slow because I can't say it? Also, you can you can ease some of those problems by just stepping it back up. So if you drop it, I think um, if I remember rightly, top of my head, it goes um, from 1.8 to 2, to 2.4 to 2.8. If you take the 50 mil back up to 2.8, You've got some really good images there and it does dramatically reduce the effect of the chromatic aberration and the coma. For someone starting out, this is a very, very good lens to do astrophotography. I personally wish I'd looked at this a few years ago and I didn't even think of it. I didn't even think of it. I, truthfully, I stepped in and I, and I rushed out and I got the Samyang 14 mil and uh, blown away. What I will say is though, I've done some videos with it at 1.8. I was out the back and I took a little bit of video and it went half clunking. And I was at 1.8 though. I wanted to knock that back around out. But uh, the positives of this lens are that, you know, it's a very cheap lens. I keep banging on about it. Less than 50 quid in good condition on the used market. So the negatives are, you will get chromatic aberration, you will get coma. But you step that aperture up and you'll be very pleased with the results at 2.8. The other side, the negative side to it, it's a bit plasticky, it's a bit cheap. Um, but hey, listen, you know, under 100 quid from brand new, what do you want? Now I wanted to test this just on the 1.8 to be honest, to see exactly what the star trails were like. The star trails came out mint, I thought, on both images. Really, really, really good. I was quite impressed with them really, and I wish I'd done a bit more astro um, many, many years ago. And for a beginner, it will get you results you will see results. Yes, you will have the chromatic aberration. Yes, you will have the coma. But you'll have a taste of astrophotography in your backyard, which is just great. So when you're out in the field and you've got your camera set up and you're using an intervalometer, you've obviously taken so many shots over so many hours. Uh, arrive home and you've got like, I don't know, 2,000 shots, whatever, you, whatever it might be at the time. Um, you put them on the computer, put them through uh, Lightroom, convert them over then to uh, JPEG, then run them through Starstax. Starstax is an amazing piece of software. Software, I, I, I can't believe it's free. Um, it's a great bit of software and it enables you to have wonderful star trails. Plus, it'll make a star trail movie for you. And that, that's just great. So that's the end of the video. Join me next Saturday where I'll let you know the one piece of equipment that I always take on an astrophotography shoot that it helps me avoid the misery of a failed evening. Please subscribe, you don't want to miss it. I'll see you next week. So just one more thing, I've just reviewed some of these shots that I've taken and the sound is absolutely pants. Um, so stick with me. And over the next couple of weeks I'll, uh, I'll try and solve that. Get some blankets and some egg boxes on the wall and some shit. <laughs>